Today we're taking a look at a build that I'm calling the One Shot Wonder that just takes down Thargoids in seconds. It's absolutely a hilarious build. And anybody can fly it, anybody can use it. It requires very little pilot skill to just murder Thargoids left and right. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try it out using some of the free pre-made shots, or you can also make your own custom shots and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more room for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports Star Citizen, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free, and use offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another build guide. Today we're going to take a look at a insta-gib build or an insta-kill build for murdering Thargoids. Now, insta-killing Thargoids is nothing new. People have been doing this for years. What has changed and the reason why I'm doing a video about it now is because with all these pre-engineered uh, weapons that we can now get our hands on, with the new weapon stabilizers, we can now do it without having to synthesize weapons and it is super, super easy. Anybody can, uh, can do it. So let's go through the build and I'm going to talk you through why I picked the modules that I have. You're going to need some Guardian Shard Cannons and I'm going with the pre-engineered variants here. Now this is going to require a bit of, um, of effort to get your hands on as they do require a material to unlock. And this is not really an unlock, it's a material to buy. So you have to get the materials for them six times in order to, uh, in order to get your hands on these. But the reason why we want to use these weapons is the fact that they have um, a very high burst DPS, so they can deliver a very, very high amount of damage with those five shots in the magazine in a very short amount of time. The pre jitter ones just does a little bit more damage, and most importantly, the jitter, that's the, how much these spread, this is basically like a shotgun, how much those uh, shots are spread out, is massively reduced from five degrees on the non jitter variants to uh, one and a half degrees on this one. There's a massive difference there. So you're gonna need six of those. If you're not familiar with where you get your hands on these things, you have to have to head to the Embony system right here, as you can see on screen. That's where you're going. So you head to the Embony system, head down to Prospects Deep, and there you can get them the, for a uh, for yeah, a material buy price. Again, get six of them, maybe a few extras if you want to make more builds. And these are super useful weapons. So you're gonna fit six of those in the largest slot and in the two size one slots, you're going to be fitting um, small, I gone with gimbal beam lasers with pretty standard long range thermal vent. These are serving two purposes. First of all, they help us add some additional cooling to the ship, as we will see later, that is crucial to this build. And secondly, um, they also help us pull aggro from the Thargoid, as we're gonna need that as well to make our uh, our shots a little bit easier, so we don't have to shoot them from the edge. We want them to face us, so we have a nice, big, flat Thargoid to shoot at when we decide to uh, to end their life. For utility mounts, as I said, cooling is important, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, even if I could count, six heat sinks on this. This is overkill. You don't need all six. I just build it because I could. You don't necessarily need all six heat sinks. I have gone again with the pre-engineered variant here, so we get a lot of heat sinks. We got to get um, uh, four, uh, four in reserve and one Lotus, so five per heat sink. You can absolutely make do with either completely unengineered heat sinks or just going with uh, normal heat sinks that you engineered yourself. It's only one level of engineering to get them up to uh, to three stored and one, so you get four per uh, per heat sink. These you get from um, from Sirius Corporation if you are interested in in these. I will have a guide, by the way, coming out where I'm going to go into more details about all these modules, where you get them, how you get them. And there's going to be a thing on Commander's Toolbox as well. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with it now. But if you want these, again, just get some heat sinks on as we are going to be needing those um, later on. Other than that, I got an enhanced Xeno scanner and a shutdown field neutralizer. Um, the enhanced Xeno scanner you can get from all the rescue ships. Just go buy them for, for normal credits, no material unlock, just go get them from the uh, from the rescue ships. Um, and the reason we have that is, again, this is technically not necessary. You can definitely reuse this without it, but then you need to be able to identify the correct type of Thargoids yourself visually. This one just makes it a little bit easier for newer players to also go scan it, and then you can get absolute confirmation that it is the Thargoid that we're looking for, as we're only looking for a very specific variant. 
Okay, core internals is really straightforward. Uh, we have armor, military grade composite, heavy duty deep plating for hull hit points, protecting the armor or protecting the power plant with armored power plant with a thermal spread to cool us down, thrusters, dirty drive, drag drives, increased range, mass manager, technically not needed as you probably want to be pretty close to it. It's not really a jump ship, but I put it on there because I had it lying around. Life support, I just gone lightweight. I do recommend an A-rated, so if you do lose your life support, you still have like half an hour to get to a station and dog up, um, which is plenty of time. I usually just fly around with, with my broken uh, life support, and then dog up, repair, and then move out again. Power distributor is a little odd, a little different than what we usually do. Here I gone with a weapon focused distributor with the Super Conduit. That is just to give us as much um, like weapon focus as we can, because these things, they do draw some weapon capacitor and I want to make sure I have enough. We need, I think it's 102 megawatts of weapon uh, capacity. So that's why I haven't done with cluster capacitor because we don't need that. So I've just gone with super conduit here to recharge faster because with weapon focused, we already get above that 102 megawatts in the capacitor that we needed. We get up to 110, which is, um, which is fine. Sensors, I went D-rated again for keeping us lightweight just to get a little bit of jump range out of this thing. And, and again, just lightweight of the sensors. You could go long range on this if, if you wanted to. Lightweight, long range them, do whatever you feel like here. Now for the optional internals, it's just pretty much keeping ourselves alive. I'm going with a shieldless build here because we're going to be fighting Thargoids. There's going to be lots and lots of dead Thargoids and Thargoids, when they die, they spur out um, caustic clouds and that's annoying. So in case we get uh, hit by caustic, I want to be able to just go silent running, overheat, burn it off. We have a lot of heat sinks, so we can just get rid of it. I'm going to show you all that in a minute when we go out. So there's a lot of, lot of hull reinforcements, 5D hull reinforcements for days. Um, we have a... Well, how many of these do we have actually? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5D hull reinforcements. And these are all engineered, by the way, with uh, heavy duty and deep plating, again, for maximum hit points. Then we have this new experimental weapon stabilizer class 5. That's the one that allows us to fit six weapons on the ship instead of just four that we could in the past. This is the build maker. This is the one that makes this build work. Again, these can be picked up from the rescue ships and you can get those um, just as a money buy. No need to hand over materials for those. Here we have two Guardian um, 5D module reinforcements. Again, just to protect our modules a little bit as we are going to be overheating from time to time. Um, that's why these are here, just to protect the modules. Then we have three 4D horror reinforcements. Again, same engineering, heavy duty deep plating to get as many hit points out of this boat as we can. And then I just tossed in like, like two um, Guardian hull reinforcement packs down here at the bottom in the class 1 and class 2 slot. Just for that, like, we get like 9.8 or something percent caustic resistance. It's nice to have that little bit, like almost 10% added caustic resistance for those two there. Now the key night off, you might have noticed that the uh, power was a little bit uh, more than the power could actually ha power plant could handle. So I've just gone ahead and turned off the cargo hatch to ensure that we have uh, sufficient power to deploy our weapons. For the fire groups, I've set up all my shot cannons on my primary fire with the beam lasers on my secondary. In the next fire group, it only has the Xeno scanner just so I can scan. Notice here how my heat sinks are not bound to anything. All my shutdown field neutralizer is not bound to anything either. And that's because if you go into your key bindings and you go into your ship controls, go under cooling, here you can set a key binding for deploying heat sinks. So you can do that right from a key binding. And in the miscellaneous menu here, scroll down towards the bottom, you have use shutdown field neutralizer, which I have also bound. So I have dedicated keys for using my heat sinks and my field neutralizer. So I don't have to use them in firing groups, which makes things a lot easier for me. When it comes to finding stuff to shoot at, I recommend you go for one of the, uh, the conflict zones around stations in invasion systems, else they spawn a lot of cyclopses. And we are going to be hunting for cyclopses, as it is the only type of Thargoid we can kill with, um, with these burst damages. So what I will be doing is I will be heading over here to the Thargoid war information, scroll down to the uh, Thargoid invasion and just find a system that's in Thargoid invasion, and make sure there's still some stations left. You can see here uh, active port remaining three. So there's still active stations in this. That means we have some, uh, some fighting going on here. And conveniently, I park my fleet carrier right next to it. Okay, so we are in the system and we actually have a number of options. We can see there's both a space-based port and there's also a surface port. I actually prefer to use the surface sites simply because 
if you are at a surface site, the Thargoids won't deploy a swarm of Thargons, so we don't have to deal with that. We're at the conflict zone, so let's just go ahead and uh, join the fight. Deploy some uh, some weapons here. And then we're just going to begin looking for scouts and begin just killing scouts. We need to, to clear the first wave of uh, scouts before we have... Um, before we have some of the interceptors show up. And as you can see here, when you get in range, these things, they do make pretty short work of scouts. You just need to be pretty close for them to have proper effect. There we go, there's one. Okay, we finally have some interceptors, so we can begin to, uh, to prepare. I'm just going to empty the guns so that we have five uh, rounds loaded. We found ourselves an interceptor here, and um, now we need to make sure that we identify it. You could either just look at it visually and see if it looks right, as they all look visually different, also on the hologram. If you are in doubt, that's why we have the Xeno scanner. So you can get the Xeno scanner out, and uh, it has a two-kilometer range, so stay within two kilometers. And now we can see <clears throat> down here in the corner that this is, in fact, a Cyclops variant. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna use the beam lasers to annoy the Thargoids so that you get um, so that you get acro. Once you have acro, you're gonna do the following. You fire off a heat sink, then you wait a second. So heat sink, one Mississippi, and then you begin to attack the Thargoid and you just spam those shot cannons. They are not full auto, they are semi-automatic, so you need to constantly pull the trigger. Okay, so beam lasers to cool down, heat sink, and then shot cannons. So, let's try this. Beam lasers. Wait for the Thargoid to be annoyed by us. And it's also gonna pre-cool our ship, so we're sitting at a nice, nice low, um, low heat level. He runs away. When he turns, he should be turning back to face us. Then we're gonna make sure that he is within, um, preferably within a kilometer but at the very least needs to be within 1.5. That is the, longer, the absolute longest range that you can. Okay, so now he's shooting at us. He's just very bad at it, I think. Maybe he's not shooting at us yet. Oh yeah, he is. Okay, so he's close, so... Heat sink. And then, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And he's gone. Put this thing in full reverse so you get away from the caustic cloud and enjoy the pretty explosions we made out of the Thargoid. So now we can go ahead and we can see we can fight ourselves. Another Thargoid. There's one right there. Okay, now it looks like he's shooting at us. So, heat sink. One, two, three, four, five, dead. Okay, where's the next one? Give me more. Now let's do an attack without doing a scan first. You can see here on the hologram, if they have their shields up, you will see when the lasers hit, they will be uh, a bluish color. Right now they have this uh, red, uh, orange color when we're hitting, that means their shields are down and we are safe to engage. So let's try to, uh, to pull some acro here. Oh, there we go. Now he's turning to face us. So he's within range. Heat sink and one. Oh, two, one. Ah, oh, come on, did I get it? Ah, I got him anyway. It was a little, uh, little slow there on the second shot, but we got him anyway. Good. Now, I think by now you get, a, you get a, the gist of this build. You just go out, you find a Thargoid, you confirm that it is the right type, and then you just go, and you delete it, and you blast it into next week. Simple as that. It's quite a fun build, and uh, if you fly it for long enough, you can make quite a bit of cash with it as well.